Hello everyone, good morning. Hope everyone's doing really well. Um wanted to get into like uh different concepts around how shamans see things versus how the rest of the world sees things. Um those that learn to get very silent and sustain silence and see energy directly, uh, learn to, to see information um, and through symbology that is shown up in dreaming. Now the dreaming world communicates. There are many ways to gain information um, for those that have crossed those thresholds. I'm not, I'm not claiming to be of that capacity. Um, I'm striving to become uh, to have access, um, not out of any other reason than because I'm uh, of a great longing um, to connect. Shamans say that they learn to turn and face time as it is approaching rather than receding. Um, dreamers learn to see things exactly how they are rather than the projected illusion that is being displayed for us to, to interact in. And uh, to hold that, is to, you have to sweat bullets to, to stay in a state of um, silence. Especially if you're just like uh, trying to do that from a place in which distractions exist or if you're just trying to sit the benefit of the gate of power and dancing and moving and moving your perception while having your physical body engaged in some activity. The gate of power is a very rare state of perception that occurs when one allows the darkness to draw them into a state of trust with their body and the earth. Um, your body knows things that your mind and other aspects of your being don't. So that's why it's so beneficial to utilize, um, flood your attention with physical intensity, right? So some of my most psychedelic experiences are during, you know, um, intense snowboarding experiences or, um, I mean, the, the most intense stuff is, is performing the gate of power, experiencing the gate of power, I should say. People say perform. Um, it isn't a magical thing. I've had it happen to me accidentally. I've had it happen because of, because um, I needed it to happen, because it's something that happened to me that I, I, I had to utilize it. Um, it happens to people more than probably they realize and they experience it as something incomprehensible. I think runners get this running high where all of a sudden they're, they're, they're physically no longer in a, in a limited perception and they're experiencing their energy body traveling at high speeds. And then, but the ego is always there to, to, to explain it away, to take the magic away and to scientifically or, you know, some sort of method to, to disregard the power of what you just had happen. And you store it away as, as a feeling that, you know, for a moment you felt that you couldn't explain or whatnot. But the, what shamans do is they, they, they utilize moments of that nature as a springboard to begin uh, discovering more and more. And... Um, you know, what happens with the Castaneda people, they read the books, they try to be, they want to be like Carlos Castaneda, but they haven't even learned to do like anything at all in the realm of energy. And so they just try to make up shit and project and pretend that they've done all this stuff and, and or they feel defeated, like they could never be as 
amazing as this person and therefore their life is worthless and um it's just so sad but because they, everyone has a beautiful gift everyone's story is rich as fuck if they could unlock their trauma and see the pain of their parents and their grandparents and the joy and all the things that are um have been passed down to them it's it's so powerful it doesn't have to be uh stories of of victory or stories of tragedy it's just the details of each individual struggle to to make sense of themselves and and everything around them and we are all in this together we are all raised here to uh in 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 a, to be deceived so that we can become aware how could you become aware if you haven't understand or come to terms with the possibility of deception conception is to to conceive of to conceive is to you know it's to bring life to something uh to, yeah so how how we come to terms with how important it is to no longer be deceived. Uh, people think that they don't, oh, I don't need to know this or that, it won't affect me. Well, it, it really does. It hijacks you if you think something that isn't true. It hijacks your ability to decipher, have common sense, be able to think for yourself, be able to extract yourself from groupthink, be able to handle the pressure of those telling you that something is one thing when it you know is is clearly not it doesn't mean we know the answers you know just because you've become aware that you've been deceived doesn't mean that you now understand the truth it's just coming to terms of the fact well i know that that isn't accurate there's something off here you know you just have to start canceling out the things that don't feel or resonate with your heart your heart is the thing that knows the gut brain and the um the whole system is in communication and that's why we want um to clear the the, the chakra line the energy gates um each each one is a gate and each one has the capacity to um function properly or and or be all, you know, all kinds of things can happen to where they're not functioning properly. And I was fortunate to work with medicine people that knew how to, they just could, you know, basically intervene on your behalf for you if you were open and they could basically open you up. And I don't agree with that now because I think uh, it won't, now that I know how, how, that one can do it on their own and or if and when they're ready it'll be really strongly guided that they need some help and then you know um, i can definitely help people find someone that'll do that for them or i can teach you how to do it for yourself um in a in a, in a pickle i might be willing to help but usually if people need that it's because um, well, it's hard to explain, but often people will get help and then all those problems will just return because they weren't ready to be without the challenges that are being presented to them. They're, they're still being um, worked with. Um, their shadow, their shields, everything's in place for a reason because their future self is guiding the process for them to become aware and each contract that each person has is unique so we're, we aren't here to judge what others are doing but it doesn't mean we go along with what they say we should do uh, so it's this idea that we are um, just being sort of led to the slaughter or that we just don't have any opportunities other than to kind of um, work 
with that which is approaching in a spiritual sense we we have more options than that like shamans figured out how to dethrone tyranny by laughing by becoming so liberated and free that the universe just guides situations uh, so that exposure ego exposure occurs now, the more of us that become light and lucid and free and, and can see things uh, for what they are, to be able to stop yourself, your, your entire being, and be a witness, you'll be shown and told things when you stop thinking. This idea that you have to think in order to know is <coughs> inaccurate. The reality is... Um, Thinking is heavy. Knowing is is like lightning. It's you, you're on point. You you feel things, and and you stop second guessing your your knowing. Your your first impulse is always accurate. It's just that we often listen to like the the ego makes a louder presentation. To so we often think our first impulse isn't the first impulse. It's hard to get to the one to the first one because you're. Your body's not used to trusting that. Your whole being. Um, so, when somebody asks you a question, would you like to go on a walk with me? What does your what what sound does your body want to make? Often I'll be asked that, and I'm like, uh, and then I say, yeah, let's do it. But that uh meant no. That uh was like I, it's it's not. But I don't listen to the the sound that my body makes or that my ego or my shadow or whatever is producing. And that doesn't mean I don't really want to go on the walk. It means that my being produced a sound based on my trigger or my reaction to a question. The trigger may have nothing to do with the question itself. It may have to do with the person that asked me or you know, and I may want to be going on a walk, but because they asked me the question and I didn't ask them, then I have in my power struggle of some sort or all kinds of weird things surface when you start to pay attention. And so having boundaries, being able to say no, learning your no's, learning your yeses. If it's not a yes, it's a no. You know, but if it's not a no, that doesn't mean it's a yes, right? Um boundaries uh time you know what are you going to do with your time right so shamans turn and face eternity and turn and face time as it is approaching rather than as it's receding that is a very powerful thing a very powerful concept shamans also learn to use utilize the darkness of just darkness in general I've, I've gone to places that are so dark that even though I'm a f in front of people, they can't follow me into the darkness because it is just so incredible in there and people aren't ready for that much love. That sounds crazy because the darkness seems scary. The darkness seems like something could be there and there are things there and and uh, there's always things everywhere. It's just we don't see them unless we're in the dark. So kids are sitting there going, Mom, there's a monster under my bed. And like trying to get their attention. Like, oh, no, no, honey, there's not. And it's like it may not be a monster, but there's all kinds of activity all the time, everywhere. Especially if you sit there and you start to head into sleep in the dark. Uh, you're going to start to see energy as you drift off because your sandwich point, your perception is moving to a place in which it can, can, can experience that which is really there. Um, the fact we talk to ourselves is the only reason that we uphold the world that we think is final. I'm not saying the world that we're looking at isn't, isn't real. It's just as real because we, we allowed it to become real through a very complex maneuver uh, energetically. 
if we hadn't been isolated to this base dream the way that we are, then we wouldn't have, it wouldn't be the way that it is. But because of the isolating, because people are limited and cannot leave, their total being is invested in this illusion, right? So they're, they're looking out into the world and, and, and constantly judging that which is outside of them as a reflection as to whether or not they are what they would like to be or and or if they are better or worse, you know, this ego dance of uh, putting th people on a pedestal. That's what the, the Hollywood dance is, is partially, you know, utilized for is to separate us from our power by showing us people that uh, have social power on a level that's pretty incomprehensible. And so people are really, really would have a hard time turning down that social power if somebody knocked on your door and said, hey, uh, I don't know what's going on, but Brad Pitt just asked for you to come and be in his movie and he wants to make you like a future famous actor and he wants to take you under his wing. And, you know, we're, we're just we're just bringing in some really strange people and we're going to totally flip the script on things and. You know, and you go, you're like, oh, well, fuck, I don't know. And you go to the meeting and you talk to these people. And, you know, as soon as you come to terms with the trade, the exchange, um, the people that you will suddenly feel, you'll feel their, their shadow in that meeting. You'll feel the, the social power and it's, uh, it's seducing you to, uh, to, to, to fully enter into a layer of um, beings that manipulate and coerce on a vampiric level in order to, to maintain their power with no remorse. Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. They wouldn't be able to have stayed there. They have the shields to handle that. They may not understand energetically the things that they've aligned with. They may not understand. They don't know what they traded for what they have, right? So I'm clear on what each, how critical and powerful each decision is for me. Because I know what I'm waiting for. I am not one that can be, um, at this point, um, coerced in the Ahmad level for any reason. The, the money has no, it just doesn't do anything other than cause heaviness to your being. You have to carry it energetically. So I wouldn't turn down uh, free money because I would distribute it to those that also, you know, um, I would distribute it in a way that wasn't putting weight on people, but was offering them uh, a means to um, become, you know, it's a tricky thing. You give, if you give a person a fish, then um, they'll, they'll eat for a day. But if you give them a fishing pole, they'll, they'll learn to eat forever. And I, I don't eat fish, but it's just a, a biblical, you know, a way of, uh, or scripture that, that explains something much more dynamic. So you don't want to really give people charity or welfare as a means to rise, raise them up. You want to give them skills and uh, empower them so that they can develop themselves, right? So money is, is really tricky. So how I would distribute a bunch of money if I was given a bunch of money um, would be a tricky thing, right? Because I don't want to go out and screw people's lives up by giving them something that they didn't manifest on their own because everyone is powerful. Everyone's capable. You know, it's just that those of us that are aware uh, have dodged these bullets of becoming caught in the trenches of the corporate um, 
yeah, the, the complex of, of social and financial power. Right. So it'd be really easy to make a ton of money. Like I had this super high IQ and I was sent to special schools and I could just be um, making thousands of dollars an hour. And instead I'm making very, very little money. I don't make any very much money and I have kids and it's very, it's pretty tricky. You know, I have to be careful, but I have to listen because, um, Fear, fear is real and it shows up and especially during times in which delicate transitions are happening. So I, I have to keep learning to listen and not go into a security based uh, nervous system perception because that will hijack that stress, that stress will hijack my dreams. Uh, in Tales of Power, Don Juan says to Carlos Castaneda that to succeed at anything, one must uh, sorry, to succeed at anything, one must utilize incredible amounts of effort without any stress or obsession whatsoever. Sorry, to succeed in anything that success must come, must, I don't, I wouldn't use that word, but to succeed in anything that success must come with a great deal of effort, but without any stress or obsession or with very little stress or obsession. This is a very beautiful way to live and it's a very em empowering and it, this is how beings um, access what's called intent. Intent is a mysterious force. Um, that shamans believe is what we are and what everything is. Um, in, in corresponding with Josh X, he, I asked about that word and he, he said that he would replace that word with attention. That everything is attention, and that um, we are attention, and I totally that resonates, and I agree. Um, intent is a very powerful shamanic sorcery word that shamans for decades, for for eons, <laughs> have utilized, um, and I think we're in a new time in which the word attention is so much more appropriate. Um, so that's a really, really appreciate Josh X for who, who, what he does, what he offers. I, I've heard things, um, from him that are super, super clear. Um, uh, I don't resonate with all, all the things that every, you know, there's so many people out there to learn from and I would love the opportunity to have like a round table discussion with people and uh, I'm working toward hopefully that happening and, because it's just, there are different ways of, of, of looking at energy directly and those that can stop their mind and uh, control, not control, but acquiesce to their uh, longing will learn to no longer be distracted uh, by that which was, you know, there as a means to keep us from our power to begin with. So learning to take your power back is a method for becoming silent because you you now have your energy. You're not you're not scattered. You stop handing your power over to so many things. I struggle still with. I'm trying to purify on so many levels and that if I go through too many, if I, if I'm utilizing too many forms of purification, um, at the same time, then, um, um, just, it ends up being too much for me. So I have to pick and choose. And, and that's goes back to the tortoise path, like really follow, um, your inner compass, 
no one else. You know, the competition thing is, keeps you from truly feeling your feelings. If you're trying to keep up or regretting decisions of the past, if you can sit with those feelings, as, as challenging as they are, a little bit at a, a little bit every day or whatever, sit with the feelings of regret, sit with the feelings of the past uh, with ex-lovers, and just draw your luminosity back from those memories. You don't have to do it for the formal recapitulation. Just start to allow your breath to draw in that which you left in that scene. Um, but regardless whether you're recapitulating or not, um, it you know when when we can truly allow things to just be and sit with our feelings. So I talk about sitting in the dark. If you just sit in the dark with that distraction, distraction, your feelings come up. You talk to yourself maybe or whatnot, but if you keep looking at the darkness and keep and and don't distract yourself, something, a lot of feeling will surface and it can be really sad. But, and, and people say, say, I can't meditate, you know? It's like, well, yeah, of course, you know, you go to sit in silence and all these unresolved feelings that you've been avoiding your whole life come to the surface. It's very uncomfortable. And so I, I teach a creative way of getting there through movement, through, you know, being creative as an understanding that these feelings are, are, are um, they're everything. There are many powerful shamans I know that are bypassing their feelings, not facing their shadow. And in fact, they're so desperate to not do that and that they believe because they've discovered shamanism that they can avoid themselves. And so through their desperation, they are trying so, they're, they're, they're sweating bullets in order to move their perception to a place where they can avoid anything that would be confronting to their ego. They want to keep, they don't want to face the the holes in their consciousness. They only want to triple down on the part that they have figured out how to do. People like this tend to be autistic or, um, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I don't know how people like this, what makes them this way. Um, it's not uncommon. My first teacher was, was, a, was avoiding his... Um, himself so much that he was literally driven like I've never seen. Um, so that's what I mean by the tortoise and the hare. The hare is always running as fast as possible to win the race ahead of everyone, announcing their victory, claiming that they're the only one that can do it because they are desperately avoiding an aspect of themselves. And, um, I was so fortunate to learn from someone that was that driven. And I was so fortunate to have the experiences that I had, but I, I walked into a very dangerous world because of it. And I have significant PTSD because of the way I was treated and spoke to and, and fucked with. Um, but I've taken that opportunity as a means to heal and learn about PTSD and learn about the capacity for one to uh, just let go and let God and and get out of the way so that you can get in the way. It's this Aikido taught me the philosophy itself taught me how to survive the world of shamans. And that's what I'm here to offer is an alternative method. Um, that is based on a holistic uh, perspective and um, just offers a mood that is current. I'm not caught in the past, um, but I recognize that the, the shadow teachers that exist that have been made themselves 
um, known and the students of those shadow teachers uh, have provided an incredible gift uh, to humanity, uh, a lesson of, of power and of consciousness, a lesson of uh, choice, ramification, um, We're walking into such a unique and incredible transition from the very linear world to a very non-linear. So much magic is coming in, but they're trying to close the door on it, right? So this, it may seem like things are going to shift and lift and be a lot of freedom, but um, in order for enough people to wake up, the system has to get more contracted so that it shocks people. So uh, it, it, we, we will be continuing to um, face what seems like impossible and ridiculous um, pressure uh, to uh, you know, tyranny. Uh, this is a very unique time for us to uh, make peace with everything that's ever happened in our lives so that we are complete, that we show up each day having all of our energy not scattered throughout time. Uh, so the recapitulation and those that do it will, um, it will change things much quicker than say in the past. Because, because of the, the, the shift of vibration that's occurring. We are raising our vibration uh, in order to meet newer frequencies, new information, new opportunities for, uh, based on the lifting of a veil that wasn't always there. So the genetic memories return. This is a lot to have happen. And so we need enough people to be able to sustain um, that gift to be able to receive it right it's i will receive as much of it as i can i will take the power in every situation that i can um, rather than avoid it right because often we avoid our power we are afraid of our power because then that means life will increase in challenges if we step up to the plate and so we push away and try to create a world in which we don't have to face ourselves unfortunately that doesn't work it, can, it may seem to at times, but uh, there will come a point where you will be called to return to the things that you think you had to run away from in order to face them and realize they weren't as scary as you thought. And there's a lot of creative ways to do that. Uh, incredible days ahead, and, and uh, I appreciate everybody and hope everyone's doing really well, and we'll talk soon.